Lesson 10.1b, Random Samples and Biased Samples. Let's start with some definitions. A random sample, that's a sample of a population in which every person, object, or event has an equal chance of being selected. A random sample is more likely to be representative of a population than a sample not chosen randomly. When a sample doesn't accurately represent the population, it's called a biased sample. A random sample of a middle school population will include students from each grade level, each class, picked by chance. A biased sample of the population might only include one grade level, only boys or only girls, etc. It won't accurately represent the entire student population. It's telling us to identify the population and determine if each sample is a random sample or biased sample. So here we have four and we can put them either on the random side or the biased side. The first one says Sarah wants to know the favorite type of board game at her school. She surveys 25 students in the chess club do you think that that would represent all the students in her school? Just 25 students in the chess club? No, it wouldn't. That's a very select group of people, just people in the chess club. So this would be biased. She's not picking people randomly in her school. She's only picking people in the chess club. This says a principal wants to know how many students walk to school. 100 students are chosen at random from a list of all students. Well, here's a little clue. They were chosen at random. This would be a random sample of the population because he's picking 100 random students from a list. This one says Sam wants to know the favorite color of students in his class. He puts all of his classmates' names into a bowl, draws 10 names, and surveys those students. Do you think that would be biased or random? If you think about it, every student in the class had a chance to be picked because he just picked names out of a bowl. So this would be random. This one says Bob wants to find the favorite pastime during the winter months of people in the USA. He asks 50 people in Florida. Do you think it's going to be random or biased? Well, this would be biased. He wants to know about all the people in the USA and he only has 50 people in one state. So that's not a good representation of the entire USA. So that's going to be biased. Can you see the difference? The random sample has representation of the population that anyone could be picked. Anyone has a chance of answering. So in the last example, we saw that Sam wanted to know the favorite color of the students in his class. So he put their names into a bowl and he picked 10 names out of the bowl. Well, suppose Sam draws five names for his random sample. How will this affect the likelihood that the sample is representative of the population of his class? Would five names represent all the students in his class? Using a greater random sample will increase the likelihood that the population is represented. It was better when he had 10 names instead of five names. Picking five names instead of 10 lowers the representation. It lowers the chance that he's going to represent the population of the students in his class. The more no names he picks, the better the representation. The greater the random sample will increase the likelihood that the population is represented. Now in this previous example we saw that Bob wants to find the favorite pastime during the winter months of people in the USA and he only asks 50 people in Florida. Well by surveying people from a US state that has a tropical to subtropical climate, Florida's warm, Bob will not have a good representation of the entire U.S. population. What about the people in Michigan 
way up at the northern border or up in Maine? Well, for this survey, the population of Florida will name warm climate activities. A phone survey of people from each state would be more representative of the entire population. He wants to know about all the people in the USA in the winter. He needs to speak to people in other states, not just Florida. The principal who wanted to know how many students walked to school, so he chose 100 students randomly from a list of all students, that was a random sample. And this sample is not biased because every student has a chance of being chosen for the survey. Sarah wanted to know what type of board game was the favorite board game at her entire school, and she only surveyed 25 students at the chess club. Well, this is a biased sample. The sample is biased because the members of the chess club do not represent the opinions of all the students in her school. They might mostly say they prefer chess as a board game. She needs to ask random students. When a population sample contains randomly chosen people, people who have an equal chance of being picked, the sample will be more representative of the population. Here's another example of a biased sample or a random sample. So asking about favorite pets in a cat food aisle in a pet store, well, that would be biased. Most people are going to say they like cats. They're in the cat food aisle. They're probably buying food for their cat. The random sample would just be standing at the front door of the pet store and asking people. You don't know what type of pet they have. That would be a random sample. By surveying a biased sample, the survey won't have an accurate representation of a population. The survey results will be skewed to one direction. Okay, we're finished with part B. We're going to move on to the last part of 10.1. We're going to talk about bias in survey questions. So just remember, in order for the sample to be random, every person, object, or event has an equal chance of being selected, of being picked. Have a great day, and please join me for the last part of the lesson. Bye.